Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh Ablon, and welcome back to another speed paint. So, I was looking through the comments a little bit, and I noticed that there weren't really many comments to look through. And by that I mean there were no comments to look through. And so, pretty well, I was just up to my own devices as per what I had to draw this week. And so, it being October, I wanted to continue the theme of just doing spooky stuff, and so... I was thinking about a whole bunch of monsters and about horror games that I've played or just that have been popular recently and one just stood out and I'm not exactly sure why and I thought about the Wendigo. Now I think that someone may have just mentioned it to me sometime recently, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, the only real experience that I have with Wendigos or uh, from the horror game Until Dawn. Now I think that came out back in 2015 or something like that. It's a little older, but I thought that it was a pretty decent game. So I didn't just decide to stick to the Wendigo as it was depicted in that. I decided to go and do my research to find out exactly what a Wendigo was and what they were supposed to look like. So for those of you that don't know, a Wendigo is kind of a northern indigenous kind of myth. And so I think it's more a Canadian thing, a little less of an American thing. I may be wrong about that. It may just be a little bit of both, but it's definitely more for the north. So pretty well, what the Wendigo is, is it's kind of a spirit that comes and it can take over a person. Or at least that's what I found from my research. And this person features some kind of grotesque bodily transformations. And then will eventually resort to cannibalism. And so it's this big cannibalistic man creature that comes after you and just hunts people down. And so there have been a lot of different depictions the Wendigo going through the years. Uh, lots of people depict the Wendigo as having like a, a deer head with antlers and then the body of a man. But uh, when I was looking through kind of what the core beliefs were behind a Wendigo, turns out that it is just a man. Typically, it'll be a man who is a uh, like incredibly thin, so thin that you can see all of its bones and they're pressing into its skin and it looks like their skin is paper thin. They have a very ashen kind of complexion about them, very pale. And uh, um, oftentimes their lips, they won't have any because they will have eaten them, bitten them off, just trying to get some kind of human meat and their eyes are sunken in. They're these t terribly horrific creatures. Now, some sources do have them as being very tall, and so that's kind of what I was going for in this piece. Some say that like a, a Wendigo could be upwards of 15 feet tall, in fact. And so I went more for that idea, and so I tried to make it about three times the height of my actual character that I put in this scene. Now, since these are often happening in the north, oftentimes in the winter when people are starting to go hungry, I decided to do kind of a winter scene. So perhaps this person who owns a lot of land, perhaps some forest, forested land, heard something in the woods one night and went out to investigate with his flashlight. And then when, when he looks away, the Wendigo hops out to devour him. So, again, I uh, was kind of inspired to do this, mostly from Until Dawn. Now, I didn't quite follow the depiction from Until Dawn. If any of you have seen that game, then you'll know what the Wendigo is and how it looks. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen anything about the game, uh, pretty well, their Wendigo is similar to what I've just described. However, a little bit shorter. They're not quite 15 feet, or at least they don't seem that way. Then again, the last time I really watched it was five years ago. Now, when it comes to horror games, I don't think I was the absolute biggest fan of Until Dawn. Just that particular style I don't find too thrilling. I mean, 
it was a beautiful game for the time, like with fantastic graphics and whatnot, but in the end, it was just kind of, you walk five feet and then you hit A or B, and you walk another five feet and you hit A or B again. And it was, I mean, it was a nice little story and everything, but in the end, I think I prefer something that's a little more like the amnesia that I just finished. I mean, it, it's a lot more thrilling to actually be walking through dark halls and having monsters around every corner where every decision you make is up to you. The entire experience is yours rather than you make one choice or another and then see what the character does. It's just kind of a choose-your-own-adventure kind of game. And frankly, when it comes to an adventure, I want to be the one experiencing it. I don't want it to just be hit A or B, flip a coin. So, yeah, Until Dawn, I thought it was a pretty good game. I'm not exactly sure why uh, I was reminded of it recently and decided to do a Wendigo. I mean, I just thought that it was a cool concept, a cool looking monster, and so that's why we're here. I also thought that this piece was a very nice little exercise in perspective and also in doing landscapes. I mean, I haven't really done many really detailed backgrounds with this YouTube channel so far. Or, well, really, I haven't done any detailed backgrounds on this YouTube channel so far. So this was kind of the first one, showing what I can do with landscaping. Now, I haven't really done snowy scenes before. I haven't really drawn trees much before. You can probably tell by my questionable bark work. I thought that it actually turned out really nicely, and it doesn't draw your eye away too much. It's not too much of an eyesore. So I thought that it went really well. I really liked the closer footprints that you can see just in the light. So, yeah. I was quite happy with how it turned out. I loved the perspective. Just, I think that everything kind of aligned very nicely for this piece. Just You can see the lines of trees and the rows in it. it. The atmosphere hits just right so that it feels that you're there in the piece. Now, one other thing that I thought was a very nice exercise for me was trying to figure out how to make stuff look white. And you may be thinking, oh, well, what the heck does that mean? I mean, you select white if you want white. But it's interesting because snow is white. But at night, if you go outside, you still think it's white. Even though if you take a picture, you go and look at the colors, it won't be white. If you make a scene look dark, then it'll probably look white to you, even though it may be kind of a purplish hue. I mean, in the picture that I am drawing at this moment, I use a whole bunch of purples. I didn't use any kind of whites. Sometimes I use lighter purples, but in the end, it was pretty well just purples. And yet, everyone should be able to tell that it's snow. And it looks as if it's nice white snow. And so, I think it's a really cool thing how you can just change the color pal palette a bit and make it look a particular time of day. And you'll perceive one color and interpret it as another. You'll be seeing all of these purple colors, and yet you'll be interpreting the snow as being white. And so I think that that was another really interesting thing. So with this piece, I got to work a ton with backgrounds, which is awesome, because I needed more practice with that. I got to work a ton with perspective, and I think that turned out beautifully. And then I got to mess around a whole bunch with color palettes, which I think was absolutely awesome. Now, when it came to their silhouettes, the silhouette of the, uh, the person walking through the snow and the Wendigo, I wanted it to be mostly just a silhouette, and then to have the moonlight that's coming from the right side to kind of be shining against them and to be very sharp and contrasting with them. And so I really wanted to get kind of the folds in the, the jacket that the man was wearing, kind of have his hood up and everything, and then with the Wendigo, I wanted it to be like just very bony looking, very unnatural. And I think I nailed that pretty well. 
I made sure that the like the knee joint and the hip that they were all very nicely defined. Made sure that I got all the fingers in there so you can see how bony and creepy he is. Put all his little teeth in, just with no lips or anything. And I was very, very happy with how it worked. And then, of course, I had to bloody the whole thing up. Because this Wendigo's been busy. This is not his first meal. And so, yeah. Now going back in and editing stuff after the fact is a little bit tiresome. I mean, when you're looking at how I have it zoomed in right now, it doesn't look that weird. I mean, it looks like they're a nice size, but after this whole thing and I get the flashlight working and whatnot, I zoom out and I realize that they're both so tiny that you really won't be able to figure out anything that's happening in this scene. So I had to go back in and resize everything but in the end, I was incredibly happy with this piece. So yeah, please do let me know what other things you'd like me to draw in October. What spooky things do you want to see? I've just covered the Wendigo, so perhaps there are other urban myths and legends that you'd like me to cover. So yeah, do let me know. Are there horror movies that have fun creatures? Are there um, horror games? have good creatures perhaps books just write it down in the comment section below and i will see if i can get to any of them during this month and i may also dip a little bit into next month as well we'll see about that though and so yeah that's pretty much it for this video today so thank you everybody so much for watching again please leave that comment down below on what you'd like me to draw next uh, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the speed paint and feel free to subscribe so that you don't ever miss a speed paint so once again thank you very much and perhaps in the next speed paint we're going to be getting to one of your suggestions so thank you very much and i'll see you then